for joy, sing for joy, the mighty over ends. Be God, be God, be God, be God, His kingdom come, be God, 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 Mountains get out of my way. Mountains get out of my way. I speak to you in Jesus' name. Mountains get out of my way. 
The word of God is alive and true, because thou art coming true. Jesus said you must obey, so Martins get out of my way. Through a valley of death, mountain on the right and one on the left. Faith gives me the power to say, Be we moved from thee today. It makes no difference. Be got all if I say, Come down. You got to fall, so mountains get out of my way. I said, Mountains get out of my way. I speak to you in Jesus' name, mountains get out of my way. The word of God is alive and true, because thou art coming through. Jesus said you must obey, so mountains get out of my way. Well, I said it once, I'm gonna say it again. Get out of my way, you mountain of sin. I'm not backing down this time, cause it is written, victory's mine. God Himself said, You must bow, so I'm telling you to move right now. Oh, mountains, get out of my way. I said, Mountains, get out of my way. I speak to you in Jesus' name. Mountains get out of my way. The word of God is alive and true. Because now I'm coming through. Jesus said you must obey. So mountains get out of my way. I said mountains get out of my way. I said mountains get out of my way. Speak to you in Jesus' name, mountain get out of my way. The word of God is alive and true, because thou art coming through. Jesus said you must obey, so mountains get out of my way. God bless you. God bless you. Why is my voice louder than yours? God bless you. Are you not happy to be here? So we want to join our voices with the choir by singing um, hymn number 664.
God bless you. So now we'll take our camp and um, after the intro, we'll sing verse 2 and verse 3 standing up after which we shall be led in prayer. Father, we thank you for this afternoon. We are exalted, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you for the first session. We thank you for blessing us. Jesus, we are gathered together again. Jesus, please bless us. Jesus, please ignite our faith. Jesus, please have mercy on us. By the, by the time we finish this program, let us go on blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. All right. Good afternoon to you all. And um, welcome to the half of our general segments of this year's youth conference. And across the country, wherever you are watching us from, we appreciate you, whether you are in Kogi State or in Anambra or in Sierra Leone or right here in Anthony watching us. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. We're trusting God to bless you as he has started to bless us yesterday with we, the youth workers. So can you tell your neighbor, wherever you may be, tell your neighbor, ignite your faith. Tell your neighbor, wherever you may be watching us from, say, ignite your faith. And we believe that surely the Lord will ignite your faith. The purpose of our program this year is 
to stir up your faith. The vision of YDD is to raise and retain an army of outstanding young people that are what? Going to heaven and persuading other people to come along. We believe by faith this is possible in your life. We believe if it is possible in the life of everyone. And that is why God is encouraging us that if your faith is on a low, we feel that through this program, you can be ignited. And we believe also, if you have not started to live a life of faith at all, we believe that God can start with you. So far, so good. We've been blessed by the program that we've started since Friday, particularly with, with the workers. Across the country, you are workers. We thank you so much for joining us. And we believe that what God has started with you, the Lord will sustain in Jesus' name. And for those of you, other youth that joined us today, we believe that you have been blessed with a very rich and practical um, Bible study class that we had at our various locations. And we believe that this afternoon's session will be something that will be a blessing to you also. I want you to open your mind. Just this program is to assure you that we are in a very, very blessed church. And it is to tell you that by faith and through the power of God, what you must be, you will be. And that is what you'll be watching out for in this afternoon's practical session. It's a practical frank talk that discusses many areas that affect the young people. I know our time is limited, but within the 80 minutes that we have to engage facilitators for this program, I believe that you will be blessed. May I tell you that the facilitators we are featuring this afternoon are people that have been young people before. Teenagers in this church or people who, were, who came into this church and they've grown through the ranks in their careers and more importantly in their spiritual life. It's a mix of gender, men and women who will be of blessing to you this afternoon. So across the country, I welcome you to a very special frank talk that I know that if you open your heart, you will surely be blessed. All right, let me also seize this opportunity to, you know, clarify um, the programming for this year. Like you know, and it has been announced in the church calendar, the International Youth Camp will no longer hold in December. It will now be in April going forward, or anytime we have Easter. And so this year in December, we are not expected to gather like we normally gather because of this change. Now, because this is a transitioning year where we just held a youth camp in December and across the country, and then we now have to do this, was why we had to do something that is abridged and in-house. It's deliberate because we feel that we need to connect with you more first before we think about outsiders. And by the grace of God, next year's youth camp around Easter time like this will be a combination of how we organize our Easter retreats in years past and our international youth camp. It brings you, the members of our church, plus our students across the country that come to our usual Easter retreat in those days. It brings it together to what we form an Easter international youth camp. And it is for four days. A broad, a big, and a remodeled IYC. Now, we are forming something big and something that brings all of us together. If you're a career person, an entrepreneur, this time around, you have the time kept that you're not going to, you will surely be on holiday. Unlike in the IYC in December, where we are all not sure. But this time around, we are all sure that we're gathered together from Thursday night through to Monday in something that promises to be a new model of our IYC, which we have brought into Easter. The program is forming, 
And so if you have ideas to share with us, you're free to share ideas with us on what we want to do going forward from next year. Other programmings we have, as far as the youth activities are concerned, remains. It's not going to change. And we'll be bringing that to you as we move on. All right, so let's come back to the program now today. I said we have a frank talk, and Sister Bumi is our host this um, afternoon. She will come forward now, and then here in Anthony, we've got two of our facilitators that are here in Anthony, and two other facilitators that are joining us from Ede and in Washington State in the U.S. this afternoon. So let's get ready. Sister Bumi will come now, and then she will pick it from there. Across the country, please stay tuned to this one. Open your heart. By faith, surely you'll be blessed this afternoon. Once again, thank you for joining us from here in Anthony. May God bless you. everyone and welcome our dear listeners to another enlightening episode of the Apo Frank Talk. Today we are delving into a very special topic that is close to our heart, our heritage. We have a beautiful heritage, a powerful gospel. This gospel is sweet really. If we take a look at it, you know, if I've been honest with ourselves, Sometimes we tend to think that the grass is greener on the other side. But if we reflect in words, you know, probably clear out the weeds in our hearts. The weeds that might have formed because of church hearts or because of principles or the beliefs that we have. If we really sit down, you know, reflect, take a look at it and clear out those weeds, we realize that we have a powerful gospel, a beautiful one that's worth fighting for, that's worth preserving, to be handed over to the future generations. Now, please welcome with me our esteemed guests that have walked this path of heritage and can testify to its magnificence. We have with us Brother Adebayo Oloyede. Brabayo is a consulting partner at CPA Partners, a firm of chartered accountants. He was a former youth leader at Ebutemeta and currently a treasurer at Ebutemeta. You are welcome, sir. Please let's jam our hands together for Brabayo. We also have Sister Olushola Aino. She is a lecturer at Crawford University. She was the former head of welfare at YDD. Currently a Sunday school teacher and sign language teacher. You are welcome. Please let's jam our hands together. All right. And then joining us from Ede, Oshun State, we have Sister Augusta Ojay. Currently a lecturer in the Faculty of Law at Redeemers University. She was the former youth head at Enugu and currently a Sunday school teacher. Okay. And finally, we have Brother Shola Adeshokwe. He is a distinguished professor of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education at Washington State University. He was a former campus executive I'm currently the pastor of our Pullman Washington Church. Please let's jam our hands together for our guests. Please. All right. You're welcome, sir. That brother Shola Deshokwe. And Welcome to our guests once again. Thank you so much for your presence here. We know that you're sharing your time and your wisdom with us today. And we know that your presence would also enrich our conversation immensely. God bless you all. All right, so we're getting into the, our heritage. Diving straight into the heart of the matter, really. What does our heritage mean to you? And how did it shape your perspective? Particularly during your formative years, when you were much younger, um, Rabbi, would you like to assist us with them? Okay, thank you, um, Sister Bumi. Uh, for me, our Christianity mm -hmm. becomes real mm -hmm. and visible when um, we walk the path 
of um, signs and wonders mm. in our daily living and even in the ministry. Um, when you watch keenly the lives of veterans, mm -hmm. you watch the life of parents, you watch the life of uh, people around you, mm -hmm. and um, you can consistently mm. see in their life victorious, you know, living mm. on daily basis. Um, that proves a point to you mm. that all things really are possible mm -hmm. through um, walking this path of faith in God. I have been opportuned and privileged to be trained by good people, mm -hmm. right? Good people of faith mm -hmm. and um, those that have lived practical Christian life mm -hmm. on daily basis. And specifically now, I, I have seen the life of my own mother mm -hmm. um, as a real Christian, as a real Christian, a real Christian. So um, you can see the, the emphasis mm -hmm. uh, I'm placing on, on the way she uh, observed, the way she lived her own life. So you can, you can put documentation of the Bible, mm -hmm. right, and proof of what the Bible is talking about. Mm. So beyond theory, beyond reading, mm. beyond what you've heard, you can see the practicality, mm. right, on daily basis. Mm. So um, I, for someone, can also say, like the Psalmist, mm. that um, lines are falling in pleasant places. Yeah. I have a goodly yeah. heritage. Wow. And um, this forms who you are, mm -hmm. the way you reason, the way you even have your faith, the way you comport yourself, mm -hmm. the way you prefer order in honor, mm -hmm. the way you respect people, because this is spiritual formation mm -hmm. for you. What you observe, what you see on daily basis. Mm -hmm. The people around you that have lived faithfully, that have lived at Christians, mm -hmm. you know, before you. This forms you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, at any point um, of your life, mm -hmm. through changing scenes of life, mm -hmm. you observe that. You also want to live the way they've lived. Mm -hmm, yeah. And um, with, with the help of God, I think um, this becomes your own personal faith, right? Mm -hmm. Personal faith and um, beyond what you've seen or what you've had. Yeah, you are living the life. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Thank you, Brother Abaya Spatula. Would you like to have some insights on that as well? Yes, for me, this is key. The gospel heritage means. It means so much to me. It means the mm. the doctrines, mm. the Bible doctrines, the traditions, mm. the uniqueness, mm. the uniqueness of the gospel, mm. the wholesomeness of the gospel, mm. the fact that the gospel is real. As a green child, I remember back then mm. what I read in the Bible mm. about the children of Israel being led by God. You know, at a point, they said the, 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 there was a cloud by day and the pillar of uh, light by night. Mm -hmm. It was something I experienced real life. Mm -hmm. You know, they, back then, at our local church, we happened to live in the next village to the local church, so we had to, during the weekends, we go, I go with my mom, my, my siblings, we, we have this team of cleaning the church. So the experience is that what the children of Israel experienced then, we discover that when the, the like about this time when the sun is so shining, so mm -hmm. hot, we see the cloud covering us. Yeah. As we are moving, the cloud is moving with us. Mm -hmm. I remember that was a particular day, it was raining heavily. As we were moving towards the rain, the rain, the rain was moving ahead. Mm -hmm. It was a real experience. Oh, yeah. And it, it's a goodly heritage yes. for me. And it built my, my, my faith, mm -hmm. such a friendship built, built my faith, mm -hmm. built my confidence. Mm -hmm. Permit me to just make reference to what I experienced this morning on my way to this place. I said, let me come early enough probably to be part of the Bible study. But unfortunately, I was stopped around Oshodi for to have my vehicle particulars checked. I did one way or another, the, 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 the renewed particulars were not in the car. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, all right, let me get the soft copy and show them. Mm -hmm. 
I got a soft copy and they said, no, that soft copy is not enough for them, that they can't make do with soft copy. Okay, they have my documents. So they said, the next thing is, you know, the corny way of having to just deal with uh, our men on the road. So okay, we want to get the tire depleted. And I, within me, I was like, I'm going for a program. I don't want anything to stop me. I sped up. And I went to park in front and I came back, to, I went back to them. On getting there, they lured me stylishly into entering the, the station. And the, police, the officer was happy. He said, eh -eh. now we got to arrested. I said, all things work together for good to them that love God. He looked at me. He said, Madam, I've arrested you. I said, it's not a problem. It's part of it. So I got talking with one of them and he said, ah, I remember Lois Carver. That you said you are going for him. That, that is one great man, Lois Carver. I said, that's our first leafy. You know, I, I engaged him and we got talking. And the man, the other uh, policeman said, ah, This woman, he said, All things work together for good. I said, he said, I said, Yes. He now said, Okay, let me use my church mind <laughs> to allow you to go. I told him I was coming for a youth program and I was going to be talking there. And, you know, it gave me an opportunity to share the gospel with them. Oh, wow. And that's for me, you know, that boldness. I wasn't afraid at all. I told them, Yes, this is what I have. Eventually, say, okay, give us something and all that. I said, I have Christ. And that's what I've offered you. That's a goodly heritage yes. for me. And, you know, I'm confident. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. It makes me feel good. You know, coming around here when I came, I, I felt that nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Remembering the days that we would be going up and down, you know, as young people. I'm still young. But it, 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 it gives me that feeling of, oh, this gospel is wholesome. Yeah. This gospel is real. Yes. This gospel is good. Mm -hmm. This gospel is something that we should hold tenaciously, and we, yeah. we do. God's blessing is sure. Amen. Well, that's a powerful testimony. Indeed, God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Of but love. But of what? Of love. Of and of power. And of and a sound mind. Indeed. Thank you so much for sharing that testimony, Sister Trella. Sister Augusta, would you also like to share your insights on this as well? Sister Augusta? Okay. Brother Chakwe. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. I can oh, hear you, Brother right. right. Chakwe. Okay. Thank you so very much. Um, well, our heritage of faith. Shall we tell you assist with the audio? Hello, can you hear me, please? It's fair. Yes, please go ahead, sir. All right. Thank, thank you so very much. Our heritage of faith means everything to me. And I, and I want to underscore uh, everything. It, it means everything. Um, as a young uh, boy, teenager in the church, I was able to connect with Bible doctrines, as, um, as others have said. Uh, those Bible doctrines, the teachings, the practices of the Apostolic Faith Church. Uh, and that was over 40 years ago when the Lord saved me. It was actually early March of 1984. Uh, and those teachings have held me steady up to today. I'm also very, very grateful for the incredible access that God gave uh, me to the veterans of this faith of, of our gospel. Uh, they were never people that you look at far off that you cannot approach. And, and it is still the same today. I had the privilege of being the office secretary uh, to uh, Reverend Mwiwa Lamuji Law first, and then he transferred me to Reverend Shoyinka's office. So uh, I was with Reverend Shoyinka as his office secretary, personal assistant for many years until he died. Um, I, so I had access to learn from Reverend Shoyinka. I, I had access, Reverend Shoyinka took me on many journeys and one of such we went to brother, the brother uh, Ubunaike at Ibadan. Brother I know, I, I had access to brother Temisa, brother Digboye, brother Augusto Somali, brother Ezekiel Aremu, brother Ikono, we took, we took a journey from Lagos to uh, I call it one together, brother Okori, sister Esther Ogufowomu, sister Rachel Fakuridi, and many, many others that are just too numerous for me to mention now. And 
guess what? Some of them are still alive today. And, and I'm very grateful for the access. I could go and ask them questions. When I moved to the United States, uh, I also had access. And we had Brother Darrell Lee, Brother Dwight Balzer, Brother Chet King. These people had, at one point or the other, impacted my life. So I saw firsthand the way of life uh, in the office at church. They left delible mark on my on my life. And up to today, I've, I've been so tremendously blessed by that access, the ability to make these veterans, my friends, the people that I look up to every single day. Uh, but the good thing that I would live with young people today is that you do not have to worry that, oh, Brashoyin guy is done, Rabin guy is done. There are people like them still in our midst today. May we, may God help us to cherish them, obey them, listen to the word of God that they teach us, and be inspired uh, by their lives. I can also say, indeed, we have a goodly heritage. Thank you for that, Brother Shokwe. Do we have Sister Augusta now to share insights as well? Sir Augusta. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you, Sir Augusta. I am the best now. I will say the same thing. I feel like I'm sad. And then. I wish you had a I said the kind of life in me. No kind of comment. I didn't have to. He must have the word. He didn't have to. He didn't have to. He didn't have to. He didn't have to. One of the fundamental things that Struggling to hear you. Yes, apologies, uh, but uh, thank you for that, and thank you, uh, guests, for that insight. Thank you for sharing your testimonies to us. Now, Bra Bio, what I mean, you said practical Christianity. Your experience is growing up now as a young adult. Yes, a young person. <laughs> what aspect of this heritage, like, is relevant, and do you find most meaningful to you and relevant? in this generation, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, for me, I think prayer, um, ability to go to God in simple prayer, mm -hmm. and ask from God all you desire. Mm. And um, with absolute faith that whatever you ask, God will um, grant, He will answer. So um, the church had given us so much impact um, making us to know that when we go to God in prayer, having faith in Him, He has the ability to answer us. It's, 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 it's very simple. But, but you know, um, we, we, we wake up every day when we, when we have um, the gift of life. 
we know that we should pray. You want to step out of the home, you are required to pray. When you come back home, it is a practice that you also want to thank God for giving you a successful trip, right? So we've gotten so much impact on this, and I think prayer is, we cannot overemphasize it. Even in the church, during the devotional service, we are aware that prayer starts all services as a tradition in this church. Even during the service, we pray. After the service, we go to the altar to pray. In fact, if we claim that we have anything, um, we profess to be Christian. Whatever Christian experience we, pro uh, we say we have, we've gotten that through prayer. And um, so prayer for me is very key, very pertinent to our Christian life, mm -hmm. to our spirituality. And even those that are afflicted, they have a place uh, to have all the comforts mm -hmm. they need through prayer. And um, that's why James 5 said that is any afflicted, let him pray. Yeah. He's any sick, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Right? And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Yeah. And when, even if he has committed sin, the Bible makes us to understand that he will be forgiven. Yeah. That is what prayer does for us. So, um, prayer is very key for me. Um, and, and that is what keeps us going. The day we faint in praying, in prayer, that is the day um, man starts to die. So, um, for me, I think prayer is very key. Um, it's very pertinent to our way of life, spiritual life. Yes. Thank you for that, Brabayo. Indeed, prayer is, I think, in apostolic faith, prayer is one, one thing they've handed over to us generation to generation because it's like the easiest thing really you have direct access to god for anything and once you have faith remember we said faith is the ladder that connects heaven and earth together it just makes life easy prayer really pray without season thank you for that brabario in all aspects of our life we know that our faith our traditions will also influence that in our career in our relationship in our academics, all aspects basically, we know that our traditions will somewhat influence it. Now, to Brother Shokpe, how has our heritage, our traditions, our faith influenced you, your academic life? Brother Shokpe, oh, please. Th th thank you so very much. Uh, that, that is actually an excellent, excellent uh, uh, question because for me, uh, frankly, I, I just cannot separate my faith from my career, from my from my career, which is academics. Now, um, this old time faith is my life. Um, I can't separate it from the way I behave at home. In fact, it shapes and influences uh, what I do or not do at home, at work, at play, at church, yeah. everywhere. So it's a lifestyle. This old time faith, I remember uh, that before I was saved, I used to be very dull. Um, I mean, would almost come last in class. And, and maybe there are kids or young people uh, are listening to me who, who are in the same position. But this was what I did. Every time when I came to church, I would hear messages about you need to be saved. So I sought my salvation sought my three Christian experiences, and the Lord gave them to me, was saved, sanctified, baptized, and that began, uh, uh, that was the beginning of solid academic life for me. Uh, and you know what, the Lord indeed answered that prayer. I told him, please, Lord, give me wisdom, knowledge, understanding, help me to be brilliant. It sounded like a child's prayer today, but anyone can judge if the Lord answered that prayer. You know, one beautiful thing is that these three Christian experiences, they just set you up for success in life, yeah. including in academics. Mm -hmm. And God has done that for me. Now, every single day of my job as a professor, my faith still defines me, even over 40 years since I've been saved, that faith still defines what I teach, what I research, 
how I act, how I react, how I work with everyone. And, and by the grace of God, many, many, many people who come in contact with me uh, know that I have, uh, that, that they have respect for my faith. It's a beautiful faith. Yeah. Sometimes they will ask themselves, ah, you better go and talk to Shola. If you have this problem, he will pray for you. Or he will, take the, he will give that prayer request in his church and God will answer. I just want to conclude that question by by referencing young people to Proverbs 22, 28, and 29 fairly quickly. It says, remove not the old ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. And then, that's 28, and then immediately, he was talking about ancient landmarks, then 29, he says, steer thou a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men. So part of the legacy on landmarks handed over to us, also apart from prayer, uh, 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 for me in academics, is the value of hard work. Yeah. As Christians, as young people, we must be hard working. We must be diligent in yeah. all that we do. Our veterans were hard working. They were diligent. We saw them build tabernacles. They built churches all over the world through their prayers, through their hard work, tithes and offering. You know, I thank God that hard work and prayer also pays in academia, and it has for me. Yeah. Thank you for that, Brother Chokwe. Indeed, we know that one beautiful aspect of our, of our heritage is the discipline it instills in us, really. If we really open our hearts to it, our heritage helps us to be disciplined people, and it also makes us outstanding, even in our academics. Now, Brabayo, you rose up to be a partner how has this faith, this heritage, our traditions also influenced your career path? God is interested in all aspects of our life, even in our career. Um, and the first practical way to knowing God's will for our career is to pray. You can see why we cannot overemphasize prayer and the heart of praying. Um, you know, because God knows us. Um, he has deposited in us gifts. And we, we also have passions that we have also developed. Um, our career is what we do for source of livelihood, our profession, the work we like to do, what we are currently doing, what brings money for us or to us. Um, so, so, our career is also of interest to God. And, and I know as Christians, we don't want to start on the wrong notes. There are certain jobs that shouldn't be of interest to us. Notwithstanding, because we have passion, we can take our passion to God. Um, I found people that have gone to school to study, um, to, to study engineering study Yoruba, hearts, languages. And when they get out of school, academics, they throw a different career line to become possibly an accountant. And so, so this is their choice. But really, we cannot downplay the heart of praying in having the right choice of career. So I strongly believe that whatever we do, um, in this respect, when we take it to the Lord in prayer, um, God will give us direction. He will definitely direct us. Uh, we, at the first time, we may not have clue to what we want to do. In, in choice for career also, we need to look at our passion. What do you love to do? Uh, probably you are someone that desire or you are looking up to becoming a, a professor of the university, in, in a university or or, or you like to have animals around you. Probably you want to become a biologist. You, you just love to solve problems. You, you want to give care to people. So you need to identify your passion and the gifts God has given you. I think that is enough to also take to God in prayer. That God, this is my passion. This is my desire. I love to do this. What is your will for me? And I know when we are persistent, you know, uh, having that kind of conversation with God, 
He's going to make a way for us. So we just need to be persistent and continue to pray. I'm very open to, to him. I, I strongly believe that he's going to make a way for us. So just like the way Paul admonished the Corinthians, that whatever they are doing, whatever they do, whether in word, whether in deed, God is interested, even in their career. So, so and that's why um, prayer is too key in every aspect of our life, for right direction, right, so that we don't fall into trouble. Thank you for that, Brabio. Simply put, we should not involve God in every aspect of our lives. He wants to be connected with us. And we know that since we've been steered, we know that God will help us even in our career decisions as well. Thank you for that. Uh, to our audience, we certainly apologize. At the moment, we'll be unable to take responses from Sister Augusta. Uh, due to our network challenges. Please bear with us. Thank you. All right. Back to Shola. So how has our traditions basically influenced family life, relationships, and the like with man? Thank you, Sister Bomi. I will, would love to share this song that really resonates with me as a growing child. And as um, the old-time religion song. This is the old time religion. This is the old time religion. Give me the old time religion. It's good enough for me. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. It's good enough for me. It is good when I am tempted. It is good when I am tempted. You know, we sing all sorts of things, all sorts of life's, life's experiences. We mention them while singing that song, and it's resonates so much with me. And uh, I'm happy that part of the goodly heritage I have in the gospel is the fact that I have direct access to God. And I can have that personal connection, personal relationship with God. You know, at every instance in apostolic faith, at every service, at every, anything that apostolic faith has to do, be it burial, be it birthday, be it uh, naming, be it uh, weddings, be it uh, Sunday school, be it um, devotional service, everything centers on salvation. You know, and it became a point where I don't have anywhere to run to. If I come here, it's salvation. If I come here, it's salvation. I remember the time of prayer, Reverend um, Shoinka. He will ask you, where is Jesus? Initially, when he asked, where is Jesus? I will be like, ah, Jesus. Jesus is in my heart. And hey, that's the response. You know, I learned to have, build that relationship between me and God. And that foundational relationship helps me a lot. And has helped me so much in building relationship with others as well. It makes me love the unlovable. You know, it makes me to be empathetic. I I know that people, some around me, who are my were my cosmates when I was way back in school. Then they did not have the opportunity I had. So when it comes to looking at them, I don't look down on them. I, I empathize with them, and I I I realize that. For adventure, they have the same opportunity I have, their lives will be better. So I tell myself, what I need to do is to show them love so I can bring them to the gospel. And when it, it, you know, it came to a point, the, the, the very sensitive aspect of relationship is a point where one has to get married. And you know, I, the, part of the tradition of this church, part of, the, um, of the, what we are taught to do, is to pray through. And he was like, oh, I had this covenant with God earlier in life that I was going to do God's will in marriage. And that helped me through. Even when there were distractions here and there, and I was like, yeah, am I going to stand or not? God remembered that covenant, and he kept that covenant for me. And uh, I was able to pray. It's not new to us when we talk of pray through, but it's like a mirage to some. But if we give it what it takes, it's a simple thing, just like we are praying for salvation. If we do, God will lead us. And when God leads, come on, there is no regrets. No regret at all. 
you know, he said, in this world, we are going to have tribulation, but we should be of good share because he has overcome the world. No matter what the challenges are, we have that same God to run back on. I say, God, you told me to walk in this path, and I'm walking in it. So you have to make a way for me. And he has been very faithful. He has been very faithful. God has been so faithful. God has been so good. That heritage of having access to the throne of mercy, having access directly to God, understanding that to have that relationship with others must begin with that relationship with God has helped me so much. God bless you. Thank you for that insight, Sister Shola. Um, simply put, you know, if you have your own personal values or you have your, for those that have mission statements, it shapes the way you talk, it shapes your life generally. And this just brings us back to our heritage. If we fully understand the heritage that we have, it shapes every aspect of our lives and makes life very easy for us. So I really, I really enjoy you all to have an open heart, really, to this heritage. Give it a trial, really. You won't regret it. No regrets, really. Thank you for that. Now, a question that often arises, <sighs> dressing question. Why don't we dress like the modern Christians? Rabbi, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> we, we, are, we are Christians and um, we are Christ's ambassador and God has uniquely, fearfully uh, created us so I think we should appreciate what we have the gospel is a real place and um, God is also interested in the way we dress so, so, so he has given us the injunction. It's a timeless injunction. And his expectation is that we should be moderate, right? And we should be discreet in the way we dress. Um, a child of God, a Christian is not an extremist. We don't want to dress to kill. We don't want to dress in arrogance or in pride. You want to impress people. No. But we should be presentable. Um... I remember an encounter I had when I was working with um, one of the financial services, a commercial bank, um, in 2007, 2008, I beg your pardon. And the MD wanted someone that would um, represent him um, to have a conversation, not technical, just to present a document and put a board member through. And um, he needed someone. And my thoughts just came to him that I think um, Bayo dresses well. And um, the person he sent to me came to me and said, ah, MD said, you will be going to this board member's house. I was very happy. Do you know why I was happy? Because it was an opportunity for me to present Christ. Yes. So, so, so we dress to glorify God, not as an extremist. Not in arrogance, not in pride, not to kill, but to present Christ. Because it's, it's also an avenue. Uh, you, you can't tell me uh, you are a Christian and you are not looking presentable. No, you should be presentable. Uh, but we won't dress as the world. Yes. And, and um, I think the function of dressing at times is to the extreme. You want to impress, right? You want to kill at times? Um, most times it's in arrogance and in pride. And God doesn't want that for us. He wants us to be moderately dressed, right? We should be discreet in our attire. We should um, present ourselves as a child of God because we are representing Christ everywhere you find yourself. So the young people, I think we've gotten one or two points, really. I know that this dressing question is a question that comes in month after month, year after year. Why don't we do? Why don't we? Why don't we? Simply put, just like what Brabayo mentioned, we are called out to be unique. We are called out to be separate. First Peter 1, 5 7 mentioned that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. We should carry our father. The way you dress really should, should reflect the father basically. So if, like I mentioned earlier, let's just have an open mindset. No one is trying to restrict you or anything, but just be open, really. It's a sweet gospel, really. Modesty. 
modest thing. Just be you. Be unique. Be, co- be separate. Come out from among them. I know that God will help us. Sashola, I think that's something. I like to add because most of the time, dressing issue is uh, at a point, it seems it is synonymous with ladies. The ladies have issues with dressing. And I, but I want to tell you that it's the simplest thing for ladies because dressing is a thing of the mind. Whatever obtains in the mind is what reflects in the outlook. Did you get that? Did anybody get that? Whatever obtains in the mind, in the heart, this is, that is what reflects in the outside. And our dressing is the first contact. Without, before we open our mouths, before we will say anything, it's like the first paragraph of our CV and dossier. So if we appear and at the same time we are not, we are called to be like Christ. That's the reason we are not eager to look like those out there or to dress like them. We have Christ and we are proud to have Christ. We're supposed to be pace setters. You know, when we dress, there's supposed to be something, oh, let's look at the way she, what she has on. Oh, that must be trending now. You know, the issue of trending things. The gospel can trend. When we present the gospel in a way that it will trend, it will trend. And we are confident about what we have. We are proud of what we have. The gospel is very wonderful. It's very unique. It's not something that is stored there and there. We have that standard. That standard of modesty. And if we keep to it, oh, we'll be respected. People will respect us for who we are. And that is it for me. Thank you. Thank you for that, Sashola. God bless you. Have an open mindset. Okay. Brother Shafa, can you yes. share a time when you felt pressured by peers to compromise your values? How did you navigate that situation? Hello, Sister Bomi. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Uh, uh, all right. Before, before I address that question, can I say a few words about dressing, please? Okay. All right. I, I love that question because, I mean, since the Lord saved me, I've I just witnessed times upon times there are people who are not of our faith. Mm-hmm. In fact, in some cases, people who are not even saved at all. I went from Christianity. I have seen them come to appreciate how we dress. Yeah. In fact, it's a beautiful gospel. I mean, like, like, I really like the way Sister Shola put it. Let no young person think that, oh, we are being constrained. This is, we are not allowed to do so. No, I have a wife, and almost every national and international event that my wife is able to go with me, people always come in. People who have not even had the word of the name of our church before would say, wow. Mm-hmm. Your wife looks beautiful. They mm-hmm. say that of my children. Your children look beautiful. They say that of many in the church. Oh, you, you folks look beautiful. You know, young young ladies, mm-hmm. you are beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Young men, you are handsome. Mm-hmm. Just dress like a Christian. You need not make any apology for it. God has told when you are saved, God will endow your life with beauty. I just want to stop there. I, I don't want it to sound like it's a constraint. No, no. It's a joy. Yeah. It is. It is. <laughs> All right. Let me, let me come back to it. I mean, the reason I said that the devil is very, very tricky. You know what the devil did in the Garden of Eden? The, the devil did not allow Adam and Eve to see all the freedom that they had. He made them see just the one thing that they could not do. That is what the devil does to young people today. There's so much freedom in this gospel. Yeah. There are, you can do 10,000 things that are great and wonderful and mm-hmm. good and godly. The devil will not let you see that. He will let you see they don't allow us to wear this. That is just that one thing. Let's not give in to the devil, young people. Mm-hmm. Let's be happy. Let's just dress as Christians and wear the joy. Again, you are beautiful yeah. and you are handsome. Yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank you, Rachel. All right. Uh, you, you wanted me to also speak to pressure from yeah, peers pressure. on how to compromise uh, uh, our values. 
and how God helped me. I will see how I navigated and how God helped me to navigate that situation. I remember when I was in secondary school and even to some extent at the university, many around me were dating. They were going out with girls, messing up their lives with girls. In fact, it got to a time that I was almost lonely in secondary school. I was called names SU, Two, Badai Badan, and all of those names. But then I remember the story of Joseph in the Bible who said, How, can, how then can I do this great wickedness mm -hmm. and sin against God? That's in Genesis 39 9. God helped me to stand. Mm -hmm. Faith in the living God helped me. Yeah. And, and when I got to the university, oh, I, I joined Campus AVS. We, were, we had groups of young men and women who were passionate, sold out for Christ. And young people in the church, I would get to campus, fellowship, young people, and then get to church, young people who love God. Those things really helped me yeah. in my teenage life. Mm -hmm. I was also determined to eat, to faith, to keep myself pure. And, and let me conclude that question by saying, you know one thing that also helped me, apart from people around me on campus, apart from making a determination myself, uh, apart from prayer, you know, those powerful sermons and teachings that that the other panelists have spoken of, by Reverend Shoyinka and other veterans, they kept us. We will come on Sunday, we will hear these sermons, very famous. It was not about God will make you rich. It was about life of holiness. I remember Brashenka preaching of harvest of sin for the sake. Youth without blemish. Beware of shishas. Brother Timison preaching on life in the tent. Many other powerful sermons like that. I will use my pocket money then in school to buy cassettes of those Bible teachings and sermons after camp committee. I will pour over them, listen to them pray over them. In fact, then I had the habit of listening to at least one Bible teaching or sermon a day, whether Monday, Tuesday, I must play a Bible teaching and listen to it. It has paid off. Mm -hmm. It built so much faith and spiritual strength and stamina in me that it made the gospel so much joy for me. I loved it then. I still love it now. Mm -hmm. 40 years after, mm -hmm. God has kept me. And, and, and to conclude, I can look at every woman or girl in the face mm -hmm. and know that by the grace of God, God has kept me pure. Yeah. It pays to serve Jesus. Indeed, indeed. Thank you for that insight, Brashola. God bless you. I think our generation, we're actually facing a lot of pressure. You have social media, you have external pressure. But I feel like the worst kind of pressure is the internal pressure, the one coming from yourself, pressurizing yourself to be something you are not. Really, but just like we learned in our Bible study, even our pressure sometimes comes from fear, fear of the unknown, fear of rejection. But I think we've learned at Bible study that we should face that fear, really. Just face it. It's not real. It's just a mirage, really. And then God has given us, he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and of a sound mind. So let's reassure ourselves in God's word. Even though it looks like my life is stagnant, it's not. He has given you a word, and that's why we said we need that faith to really help us, even in these trying times. God bless you. Thank you for that, Brother Shokwe. Right. So, Sister Shola, in what ways do you think we can effectively share this message of the gospel with those unfamiliar with it? Sharing the message of the gospel is, um, is a comprehensive um, one. You know, it begins with having that identity that anybody can, can relate with. You know, we, I remember my days at the university as an undergraduate. The effect of having sweet fellowship with people of like minds. Mondays used to be our fellowship days, and that day, 
you see all of us in corporate dresses. You know, we didn't have so, much, so many outfits then, but the few we had we wash and iron and appear so good. And an ama the amazing thing is that any Monday that we're not seen in those corporate dresses, they, 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 my, class, my, my classmates will ask, ah, Shola, is there no fellowship today? That's to show that they are watching. Yeah. They know us. They know what we do. They know what we stand for. So it's easy for me, it was easy for me then to relate and to tell them the gospel because I, I have it in and out. You know, it's all over me. It's within me, but it's all over me. You can see that, no, this person carries the gospel. And that, that was it for me. So, to tell people of the gospel, we must have that stand. We must have that living testimony. It's not until we open our mouths to talk. Talking to them is part of it, but the life we live, we must have a life of consistent, a consistent holy life that will minister to people even before we open our mouths to talk. They know when they have you, they know where to go. They know they have to just come, come to you and say, ah, this is, I have this kind of problem, you know. And that was it for me. And the fellowship, I remember then, majority of us then in my set, as uh, members of the campus fellowship then, at my um, AVS, majority of us were average students. But I remember the day we went for prayer meeting. With them, we will have ladies' prayer meeting, we have men prayer meeting, we have fellowships and all that. So we were there, I was to lead the prayer meeting, and I, we, we, it occurred to me that we should pray. We should tell God. That was one, that's one of the good heritage that worked for me. That we should just tell God what we want, the grade we want. And I opened my mouth to say, God, I was the one that led the prayer. Let's tell, tell God, let's, let's be specific. And I, when I was praying, I opened my mouth and said, God, I want it to one. <laughs> Someone in me laughed. <laughs> How will you get it? Do you want to steal it? But there is this faith in me that said, if I ask anything in, my, in Jesus' name, he will do it. Yes. That's one of the memory verses I learned in the elementary uh, classes. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So simple and straightforward. And so I told God, yes, this is what I want. And by the time we were done, we were just talking on our way back to the hostel and we were saying, what did you ask? Somebody said she asked for first class. I hear I said I asked for a 2 1. Somebody said I asked for a 2 2. Somebody said I asked for a first class. Lo and behold, lo and behold, exactly the way we said it. That was what God did. And you know the testimony that the one, the one that really encouraged me the more, like in my department then, were so many, but only seven of no, there was no first class. I wish I had asked for a first class. <laughs> but only seven of us made a 2 1. And one of my friends came over and said, I, I saw your name. 2 1. I said, Yes. God did it. He said, ah, How can God be partial? Then I also prayed. I said, I told God what I wanted, and He did. You know, that's a goodly heritage. There is nothing God cannot do. Yeah. Until today, it's an encouragement. When I remember that time, I remember that it wasn't my strength that did it for me. Because I sat back to calculate my CGP. I was, I, do, I was not near it at all. Because I had a challenge my early you know, first and second year. I was sick and I could not just cope with the rigors of uh, academics. But God did it. God is faithful. So that's another way of evangelizing. Because I, that when I tell people, oh, my God can do all things. And then I show you by what you have now. So I, these are the testimonies I tell them that there is nothing God cannot do. And like I mentioned my friends this morning, that I told them all things work together for good. I was able to contact them with the gospel. I was able to remind them that God loves them. I was, you know, I wasn't afraid. I was bold enough to talk of, about the gospel. So every opportunity for me can't, whether I'm in trouble or I'm, in a, I'm enjoying myself or I have, you know, what about the situation? I seek every opportunity to tell of the love of God to those who don't have access to it. Thank you. Thank you for that testimony, faith with evidence. Well, thank you for that. Rabbi, I would like to share insights on this as well. Yeah, yes, just, just to add my voice to that, um, just the way Sister Shola said it, um, you must have created, created that identity. The husbandman must have first of all eaten that fruit, tasted 
of that fruit. And that's what brings the boldness. And more importantly, our, our lifestyle um, is the best sermon, is the best teacher, is the best way to tell of Christ to anyone. I, I remember as a university student, um, you know, the, the gospel has a way of impacting our lives. I, I wasn't um, someone that likes to, to talk, especially in the public. And my enrollment for AVS work um, created a great deal of, um, you know, opportunity for me. I remember the first day I visited the school at Ife, about um, seven day um, grammar school. And after the AVS presentation, the principal came and was thanking, almost kneeling down for a student. I said, Mommy, no, no. You know, that gave me um, courage that um, we can really do all things. So I enrolled again for the second school, um, for the third school. While on campus, you know, as a student, I was visiting almost three, two locations in a week. And you know what? You won't come to my class one to ten. I top ten percent in the class. So what that means is that we only will have an excuse not to say um, uh, to, to come all out for God. And this is what God can really do for us. We we must display some spiritual intelligence, even amongst ourselves, with people that you know um, that we interact with. I remember. Um, how a friend got to be a member of the church. When I was in the college, the polytechnic, um, you know, a typical apostolic faith boy is likely to be very conservative. You have limitations. You don't want to interact with, you know, you, you play with them, but there's always limits. And um, I had a group of people that we read together um, just, just, we just got ourselves randomly and, and we started to read. I observed on a typical day, a friend was sick and um, I just, you know, uh, greeted him and told him all is well with him. I didn't know he was expecting more from me. I discovered that he was cold towards me. Whenever I greet him in the group, he won't even answer me. And I was very uncomfortable. So I called other friends and I told them that I don't know what is happening with this friend though. That maybe, and he said that he was expecting me um, to show more love, to show more care, probably to even give him some drugs. And I told him I was sorry. You know, um, it's barely 27 years now. He's a very good Christian in the church. That has brought us very close. That has brought him to the church that has brought him to be even a Christian. Yes, yeah, so um, our lifestyle uh, will preach Christ more than any other thing we, we think we may be doing. Because people are watching you. You are the book people are reading now. So if you say you are a Christian and um, your lifestyle does not match what you profess, it's going to be a discord to bring in people to Christ. Thank you for that. I think to the workers that were here yesterday, you can recall the Good Samaritan story. It's a beautiful way to share the gospel. And it's no news that people are looking at us, what we do, basically. So it's not the I am a Christian, but prove it, show it. How do you interact with people? It's actually a beautiful way to share this message. Thank you, Mr. Shola and Brabayo. All right. Subra Adeshokwe. If given two minutes. How would you sell our faith and traditions to the younger generation? Brother Shakwe. All right. Thank you so very much. Now, to young people, do you ever desire the best of the best in all that you do? Do you ever think of or pray about a godly home, a great career, raising wonderful children who fear God, just having the best time of your life. If you do, then this is the faith for you. It has been for me. 
And I'm, I'm not speaking theory. I'm being very practical. Now, this faith has defined everything in my life. The embracing this faith has given me joy, peace. In this faith, I have found a Christian wife, a soulmate, that we serve God together. God has given us peaceful home, wonderful children who love God and are doing exceptionally well, both in the gospel and in their career. Great job, career. The faith, people come around and say, Oh, Sholanga, why are you, how did you have this? And I tell them, it is Jesus. I don't spend money on cigarettes. I don't spend money on alcohol. Why would not God bless me and, and give me best things in life? It's a wonderful faith. And I challenge you, just try it. You will see that it works. It has so much worked for me. Thank you. I, that's not quite two minutes, but I will leave it there. <laughs> The gospel works. Give it a try today. Thank you for that. So, Rabbi, uh, I know you mentioned um, earlier that your mom brought you to the gospel. So you, you, okay, so you were brought to the gospel. That means you had a choice to either live or stay. So to you, why did you choose to remain committed to this gospel? You had a choice. Okay. Um, thank you. The, the gospel is real. Um, life is all about challenges. And, and the beauty of the gospel is that you have someone that bears your body. Um, so, so on daily basis, when there are issues, you have someone to cry to, to go to. Um, okay, let, let, let me also quickly, because you mentioned my mom, I, I remember when I wanted to um, enter the um, secondary school from one, there wasn't money to pay school fees. It was tough. And I think that was about 98 Naira. Yes. And, and all my mom could do for me, because I knew the situation, it was tough. She gave me 50 kobo. She said I should go to a Butimeta church. Imagine, 12-year-old boy trying to gain admission to secondary school. Um, she couldn't help the situation. So I was exposed to knowing that with God, you can actually do all things, yes, in, in the gospel. So I got down there, uh, and, um, you know, little prayer, shuku shuku prayer, and um, the rest I slept off, right there on the altar. But I knew the mom promised my principal that, by God's grace, come next week Wednesday, she will bring the school fees. That did not fail. Imagine, it didn't fail. God provided in a miraculous way. That's money. So, um, so really, what choice do I have? Choice to live a good life? Choice to continue to run to someone that you know can always bear and carry your burden? What choice? That, I think that's the only choice I have. So do I want to run to the other side and continue to suffer? No. So um, I've been exposed to praying. I've been exposed to seeking God in all life challenges. So, uh, and I think that's the only choice I have. And with the grace of God, on daily basis, you know, you just find yourself moving on, moving on in the grace of God. In the grace of God, despite the challenges, at times at the top, at times in the valley, but you find that, that the grace of God is sufficient. You just overcome on daily basis. So for me, um, I think this is the only choice I have, um, to befriend Christ, to walk in this path with God, and um, eventually to see him. That, that's, that's, that's just what I, I, will, I, will, I can only say here. 
prayer works really Old Testament see that the Lord is good and then you would see the evidence that indeed we have a goodly heritage all right Bra Adeshokwe Yes. I know you were born in the gospel. You mentioned 40 years you've been saved. So you also had a choice. Why did you choose to remain? Yeah, thank you so very much, Sister Bonnie. Um, I, will, I will tell a story um, about why this gospel works. I mean, there are so many. I can tell hundreds of stories of miraculous answers to prayers. But here, here is one. Four years after I was saved, I was saved in March of 1984. At, um, I went to Liberty Stadium to watch a soccer match. And then the Lord convicted me on a tall tree. So if you die here, where will you spend eternity? So I came down, was living at a pata then, walked home, prayed a sinner's prayer. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And the Lord saved my soul and granted me in the Apostolic Faith Church. Uh, uh, my parents brought me. But, you know, there was a time I was living, I, I, I was writing my wife exam in 1988, and I was living with my grandmother at Ibadan then. And in between the Ryak exam, I, I mean, all my food, the food that I had, grandma had gone to Lagos to take care of, some other grandkids, so I was left alone then in Ibadan. Almost all the food that I had, you know, there was nothing again except one tuba of yam. And I still had like one week to write my exam. As a young boy, I prayed. I said, God, if you will do something for me, expand the life of this one tuba of yam so that I can eat it for the next one week. And you know what? As childish faith, I closed my eyes every morning and took part of the tuba of yam, threw the rest under the bed, and then went to go and cook the yam. You know what? I had that yam every single day for one week. It did not finish. It was the last day of my exam, I Greek, that I opened my eyes to see what was left of the yam. If I knew, probably I would have kept closing my eyes and I would have eaten that yam for years. I saw as a young boy miraculous answer to answers to prayers. So nobody needed, in terms of commitment, I did not need people to start pampering me to walk in the faith. I saw God move right in my eyes. Crippled people were brought to the church. They were prayed for during camp meeting. I was there, but I showed you all of them. They, those people walked. I saw sinners, act sinners, fetish people, and God saved their soul. So I saw remarkable answers to pray. What, what, so then the question is that, well, these have made me remain committed. We have a beautiful gospel. It has worked for me at home, at work, in raising my children again. I have seen miraculous answers to prayers, not just only in my life, but in the life of many young people and elderly people in our church. And many have asked me, how is it that young people in your church do exceptionally well? It is because of this wonderful faith they have embraced. I told you about some of my mates who were having two, three girlfriends and messing around with, with girls. Today, Many of them have two, three wives. Their lives are in a mess. They will write me and say, Shola, how can you help? You know, young people, stay where God has put you. This gospel works, and it works wonders. People may make fun of you now, but, oh, you know, they will come back to you. Yeah. When they need help, when they need prayers, when they need support, they know who to go to. Yeah. They know your God. I can I can go on and on. I, I start I finished my PhD and nine years after my PhD I became a full professor. It has never happened in the history of my award of Washington State University for for a bam 
well under 40 years now almost 140 years 130 something years now it has never happened nine years after it is not me it is this faith it has worked in all aspects if i see anything better than me i would have done but i can tell young people there is nothing better than jesus i've never seen anything work like this faith and and to close it has a sure destination it will take you right from this world to heaven. Oh, no wonder Paul said in Romans 1 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. The question for you young people is that are you just a fan of this faith, of this gospel, or are you a committed follower of Jesus Christ? Of this gospel may god help us to not just be a fan but to be a committed follower thank you and god bless solid points there are you a fan or a committed follower or to have a childlike faith indeed we have a goodly heritage thank you for that brashola all right and um, as we near the end of our discussion we would like to ask our facilitators what is one piece of advice you would offer to future generations to help them uphold and cherish this heritage, this beautiful heritage and our values? I'll start with Tashola. Yeah, for me, I will say I only hear people talk about their experiences in the world. I never had that. Mm. <laughs> It's, it's a great thing, it's a great privilege, you know. Even when people are, when they are healed of those wounds that they sustain right in the world, the scars are there. And I look at myself, there is no such scar, no such wound. It's a beautiful one. And for you young people, if you have the same privilege that I have to be nurtured in the gospel, to be brought out in apostolic faith. Oh, it's a great thing. Please, cherish it. Hold it. You know, I, I have lost nothing. I have gained everything. Even right there as a secondary school student, as an undergraduate, you know, in those days, way back in uni, like, weekend, my weekends are not, most of the weekends will not find, find me in school. And by the time I return on Monday, and they say, oh, there was a serious fight in the hostel. There was this, there was that. I say, ah. I say, I'm not away. I say, where were you? I say, no, don't mind. Ah, she, she, she don't, she's not always around when there is trouble. You know, this Goliath prevented me from troubles. When it came to the issue of uh, uh, unwholesome relationships, let me say the way it is, girlfriend and, bo and boyfriend and all these stuff, God prevented me from experiencing such heartaches because I was never there. You know, it got to a point my friends were asking me, hey, are you sure you are going to get married? So when I go, when I invited them for my wedding, they were like, wow. So you mean that you'll be married without having a boyfriend ahead of time? You know, God, the gospel is sweet. Just give yourself to it. Embrace it. Possess it. You know, be of service, be available. In fact, that, that was part of what helped me. I say, when they invite me for to come and come and do it, I say, I tell myself, God gave me this life, and I love to serve. Be of service, be of help. Make yourself available for God's work. It helps. It's a, it's, it's, it, it helps because when you are not available for God, you will be available for the other, for the devil. But if you are available for God, God will make your life beautiful. He will make the best out of your life. And you have not one, one thing at, at all to regret. God bless you. That's my Thank tip. you for that, Tashela. Well, by you, for the advice. Okay, my, my advice to us is um, let's be real. Let's possess the real thing. Let's have an encounter with God. Let's have that true experience, real experience of salvation. It is real. It is only when you have the real thing that um, you can talk about it. 
and that, that's just it. And you can actually be an example. And that was why Paul charged Timothy. He told him, he said, let no man despise thy youth. You can be somebody. You can be an example of believer, right? In faith, in word, in the way you do your things. But the first thing first, and that is to have the right foundation. When the foundation is there, um, true think or thing, you will just observe you are floating uh, in, in issues of life. Thank you. Thank you for that, Brad Bayo. And finally, Brad Deshokwe, what advice would you like to give to us? Thank you so very much, Sister Bini. This has been a wonderful, wonderful session. Um, I would say, I mean, Sister Augusta is not here. Um, I could also, uh, this, I know she will say this too. Don't lower the standard of the faith. Don't negotiate that standard with the devil. Don't trade it with anyone or anything in this world. Live for him, die for him. Let me let me close this with up. Uh, so before I close, be be friends. I told you about veterans of faith, they are accessible. My kids will always say, Daddy, you have friends of people who are much older than you. Oh, yes. I like to be friends to all these veterans. In fact, some of you may not know, some of you have Sister Esther Gufaomu, Sister Richard Fakuridi there with you. I have received a text message this morning, greeting me, Easter message from Sister Esther Gufaomu. After this program, I am going to text her back. Or call her and Sister Rachel and many of these veterans, Reverend Ezekiel and Manuel, they are with you. Sometimes we look way back, oh, during our time, you know, the gospel is always ever present. God's people are there with you. We can't go that every face in life, the people of God are there. Let's take advantage, let's, let's be friendly with them and learn from them. And now, I will close Second Timothy chapter three verses fourteen and fifteen says, "But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and from a child thou hast known the holy scripture, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus." I encourage young people, future generations of old and cherish this heritage, read your Bibles and pray every single day. Read your Bibles and pray every day. When you read your Bible and pray every day, it will help you to draw closer to God. God will give you the strength to hold on to the faith. Continue in what you have done. But just continue in the doctrines, in the teachings, in the sermons. All that you have heard today, all that you have heard during this weekend, continue in them. God will bless you. And if we don't see in this world, we will see in heaven. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Powerful insight indeed. Thank you to all our guests for sharing your wisdom and experiences with us today. We appreciate it. Please let's jam our hands together for our guests. Thank you, Brother Shokwe. Thank you, Brother Bayo. Thank you, Sister Shola. Thank you. And thank you, Sister Augusta, as well. We would love, would have loved to have you here. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And to our listeners, thank you, everyone. Thank you. And to our listeners, as you go about your day, remember to embrace and cherish your heritage. Like I mentioned earlier, we tend to look at the other side. The grass is greener. A lot of us are actually chasing stones, thinking we are chasing diamonds. But when we have a gold mine, we have a beautiful heritage, a powerful one. It is sweet, really. And I'm enjoying you. Come, taste, enjoy it. Give it a try, really. You won't regret it. Thank you once again. So we'll have Rabbi Olede close us out on this session. Till next time, this is Apple Frank Talk. Thank you.
power is just still the same today. Right? The power is just still the same today. And Paul requested for that power. This is a unique season. It's sister season. It's season that um, we, 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 that premises our faith. Premise our faith because Christ had come. You know, he was beaten. He died. And he resurrected. Just for us. On this day, right? Um, he's fighting our cause. Fighting sin. Fighting the devil. Ensuring that we will have a new life. And that was why Paul said that I may know him. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. I know we want to experience the power of his resurrection today. And it is possible. Because the power is just still the same today. The, the, the quartet said. That mountain. Get out. Get out. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. You know there are mountains. In many forms. Mountains of sin. Mountains of stagnation. Mountains of poverty. Mountains of barrenness. Today. Christ wants to take them away from us. And so it will be. Because we will pray. We will experience the dimension of Christ's resurrection. Anew today. In the name of Jesus. Do you want to have that experience? Do you want to have that experience in your life? Do you want to have, do you want to taste Christ in a new way? I pray that you come to the altar. And as you come, pray you will have a new life. You will experience him. The heritage that you have had will be your experience. Christ will do this for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I enjoy us. Come forward. Let us come wherever you are. Um, online, at our different locations. Let us continue to pray uh, because we have a goodly heritage. We have a goodly heritage. Let us continue to pray and tell God that we have we want a special time uh, during this Easter season. Christ will do it. He's here. He can do all things for us. And as we pray, sincerely praying, He will visit us. He will give us a new life. He will take away the mountains before us. All the mountains, mountains of sin, you know, mountains of stagnation, mountains, as we speak to them this afternoon, in Jesus' name, they will all fade away. That is the desire of God for us, even during this Easter season. It is a special time, it is a unique time that we go to God in prayer and renew our vow to Him. It is a special time that, you know, sinners come to him and pray. Even saints pray about their life and um, so that they can possess the real power that Christ's resurrection and his death has brought to them. I pray that God will visit us. He will make today a unique day for us. You will experience Christ in his uniqueness, in all power, in all power, in all power. All those mountains disturbing your life, Mountains of sin, all those mountains, uh, Christ wants to make them to fade away this afternoon because He has the power to make it look real for you so that you also can have that heritage, the heritage of faith. Christ is here and is abundantly able to do more than you are asking for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you for speaking to us through the program tonight. Across the country, as we all go on our knees to pray, Lord, strengthen our faith. Lord, strengthen this heritage in our hearts. We've heard the word and the word has spoken to us. Lord, let it do wonders in our lives. As we pray right now, those that are not saved, save their souls. Those that want sanctification, sanctify them. Those needing the infilling of the Holy Spirit, Lord, fill them with your spirit. Those needing healing or clarity on any matter, Lord, on their news right now, sort it out. Bless every one of us. Thank you for what you have done for us at this youth conference across the country. Do this for us and much more. And why not take us to heaven at last? In Jesus' name, amen.